Hey everybody, it's me Fadi and welcome to my aquarium channel. Today I'll talk about high nitrates and how to reduce it. Nitrate is the end product of the nitrogen cycle. So it's constantly added to your aquarium water. For many, it may seem like a constant battle to keep nitrate under control. However, there are many proven ways to minimize nitrate buildup. So here's what you need to know to take control of nitrates in your reef tank. High nitrate will stimulate zooxanthellae growth within the coral tissue. This will result in slower coral growth and coral tissue browning. Nitrate is not a deadly killer of corals, but long-term elevated nitrates may inhibit corals from growing at full potential and will make the corals less resistant to diseases like rabbit or slow tissue necrosis, RTN and STN. However, nitrate will stimulate algae growth. Nitrate is a great water quality indicator. Because as nitrate rises, so do other organic compounds that will contribute in an increase in algae growth and impact your fish and coral in a negative way. Nitrate levels in the wild reefs and ocean are below 0.1 ppm. However, home reefs are very different from wild ones. Many successful reefers keep beautiful thriving corals with nitrate levels above 10 ppm. So the general idea for reef aquariums is to keep nitrate as low as possible without stressing over a specific level. In my reef tank, I try to keep the nitrate values between 5 and 10 ppm. We need to test for nitrate weekly using test kits like Salifert, Nios and Red Sea. Now let's talk about how to control the nitrate values and maintain them at the desired levels. Regular water changes are a great way to deulate organics and remove them and balancing salts and replenishing trace elements. However, they don't work so well for controlling nitrates. With 10 to 20% water change, even if made every week, you will never be able to significantly decrease nitrates. That's because nitrate is constantly being produced by the biological filter from food and fish waste. And there are more effective ways to remove nitrates. The best way to control nitrate and preventing it to reach high levels is following best practices from the start of the tank, like using clean cured live rock, or clean dry rock with bleach to reduce any organics that are attached to the rock. Using RODI water for making salt water and for top off. RODI systems will remove nitrate and a long list of unwanted compounds you don't want to add them to your reef. Keep appropriate fish stocking levels. The more food and fish that you add to the tank, the more nitrate will be created. Feeding and stocking is fun but too much will certainly get you in trouble fast. This is the exact reason that when keeping a reef tank with corals, it is a good practice to minimize the fish. One of the most important way to control nitrates is biological filtration. Deep inside the tiny pores of the life rock, anaerobic bacteria convert nitrates to nitrogen gases through a process known as denitrification. Keep low fish count and enough live rocks this can be all that's needed to keep nitrate levels low alongside following best maintenance practices. So if you have a nitrate problem, first you'll need to know the source of this problem. Let's start troubleshooting first with your source water. Are you using RODI water? Are you maintaining your RODI filters and changing the filters inside regularly? To make sure you can test your RODI water with any nitrate test kit. Do you have many fish? Are you overfeeding? Do you have enough water flow and movement? Dead spots will acclimate organic waste that will turn into a nitrate factory. Are you using a properly sized protein skimmer? Are you maintaining and cleaning your filtration system? You need to clean the sump to make sure that there aren't any debris. Don't use bio balls and filter pads in your filtration system. These materials will trap many organics and will turn into a nitrate factory. Also filter sucks can become a nitrate factory. If you are using filter sucks, you need to wash them every few days before they clog. I use them occasionally after water changes or major aquarium and some cleaning for a day or two max. Then I machine wash them with bleach and let them dry completely so any trace of bleach is evaporated. If nitrate is still a problem after this, you will need to look in another methods. Keeping a good size refugium is very helpful in controlling nitrate and phosphate levels. By harvesting the macroalgae, we are exporting nutrients out of the tank and make more space for new algae to grow to remove more nutrients. The effectiveness of the refugium depends on the size of the fuge. It should be at least 10% of the display tank size. 
in addition to the strength and spectrum of the light used. For more details about Refugium, you can check this video I made earlier, the URL is in the description below. Algae scrubbers operate on a similar concept of the Refugium, except that they rely on a different type of algae. Water flows through colonies of microalgae inside a scrubber chamber. The microalgae removes nitrate. Like Refugium, it's important to harvest the algae to physically remove the nitrogen from the aquarium. You can use sludge removing bacteria like Fritzyme Monster 460 and Dr. Thames Waste Away. Using these products will remove different organic wastes from dead spots in your tank and will be very helpful in controlling nitrates and phosphates. And it is very helpful in controlling nutrients in heavily stocked tanks. Carbon dosing is a method to add carbon source to remove nitrates from your aquarium water like alcohol, vinegar and sugar. These carbon sources feed some kind of bacteria that will feed on carbon, nitrate and phosphate and remove it from the water column. This bacteria can be removed by protein skimming. Retsin Obox, AZNO3, vodka and vinegar are all examples of carbon dosing. When carbon dosing, it's recommended to start with low initial dose and increase the dose slowly over time. It's very important to follow the manufacturer instructions for these products. With carbon dosing, always start slow and increase over time and do not overdose. Overdosing with very high nitrate levels will result in a bacterial bloom. The tank water will turn white from the excess amount of bacteria in the water column. This will lead in very low levels of oxygen that may suffocate and kill your fish. Another thing to keep in mind that carbon dosing with high catch may cause some problems, especially in SPS corals. Alkalinity more than 9.5 DKH can result in alkalinity burn on your acropora tips. And this is a table that gives how much vinegar to dose in a given tank size. Notice that we start with a small daily dose and then increase the daily dose every week until you reach the desired nitrate value. Testing nitrate once or twice weekly is very important and you will need to adjust the carbon dose depending on your test results. I also started to mix my own carbon dosing recipe that is very simil similar to Red Sea Novax. It contains alcohol, vinegar and RO water. And I will show you how I make it in a future video. Biopellet reactors are similar to liquid carbon dosing. This method is also known as solid carbon dosing. You add these biopellets in a special reactor. These biopellets will dissolve slowly over time and provide a carbon source for bacteria. Another way to control nitrate is to use some porous ceramic-like materials. The porous structure and rough surface provides an environment suitable for denitrifying bacteria. These media are likely tiny live rock. It will typically be placed in a media bag or inside a reactor. And keep in mind it takes several months for the media to become colonized with bacteria and reduce nitrate levels. Another way is the use of sulfur denitrator. It's a recirculating reactor that houses a bed of sulfur media below a bed of calcium carbonate media. When you use any nitrate reduction and exporting method, you need to be patient. Many of these methods will not work instantly. They require time to establish and to begin lowering your aquarium water nitrate levels. Also, you need to understand that biological denitrification depends also on phosphate levels. Macroalgae and bacteria require both nitrate and phosphate and sometimes other elements to grow. The lack of one or more of these elements may be a limiting factor for the growth of the algae or the bacteria. For example, as Ketomorpha in your refugium grows, it consumes nitrate but also phosphate along with it. Once the available phosphate runs out, the algae cannot grow and will no longer remove nitrates. Another element that is needed for algae growth is iron. Also, not enough light or wrong spectrum will limit the growth of algae. That's it for today. Next week, I'll talk about how to control and reduce phosphate on your aquarium water. Thanks for watching and see you soon in the next episode. And don't forget to like and subscribe and see you soon.